Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hey, welcome back into another episode of How Harmonious at Lunch. We got a solo episode for you today because I have been getting one question or one form of question a lot recently. I've been on a lot of calls with other entrepreneurs, small business owners looking to grow their business and there's a common solution and I want to paint what that picture looks like for you. So let me ask you this question. What if you could grow your business by working less? Crazy, right? Well, it's actually not crazy. And it's the only path we take our clients through. A lot of consulting companies and business model teachers, whatever you want to call them, they focus on doing more activities, managing more data, collecting more metrics and all of this other stuff. So when you're trying to grow your business, it's actually by doing more work. Well, obviously that's not sustainable. And that's the model that we see in corporate America. That's what the biggest companies in the world do. When they want to scale, what do they do? They hire a bunch of people. And then when they don't need those people because they've scaled and they're leveling off, what do they do? Well, they lay off all those people. It's not fair. It's not right. It's unsustainable. And quite frankly, it's just stupid. So what we do is the complete opposite. We always start by working with the founder, the CEO, or the leadership team, depending on how big the company is, and saying, what do we need to do first? What can we eliminate and have you work less so that then we can grow? It's a totally backwards approach on the standard accepted business model. And that's what we do here. That's why our logo, if you're watching behind me, is the upside down question mark, because we ask questions, but not just any questions, the ones that actually produce answers and results that we can work with. So we're going to take this, we're going to go through our three-step formula to grow your business by working less. And yes, I will say this, I will put a stake in the ground. This is the only way to grow your business. If you're not working less and getting more, you are working yourself out of business, into the grave, into more stress, and it's not a place you want to be. It's probably a place you already are. So let's get you out of that and do it quickly. We do this plan in 90 days. It's a very simple plan. And I want to share it with you of what exactly we're doing with our clients. And you can implement that in your business as well. So a little context for you here. Let's go over what who's really set up best for this to happen. Well, quite frankly, it's entrepreneurs with teams. It could be a small team, about five employees up through about 50. It could be a small team. It could be a small team, anywhere from about five to 50 or so and beyond, but that's the sweet spot. If you are a solopreneur or you have a smaller team than that, just listen because it, it this will still impact you. It just might not be as quick. So again, I said we implement this within a 90-day period. You can still do it. And as a matter of fact, you might be able to get it done quicker if you're a solopreneur, but that's the plan. 90 days, we're going to work less, have less stress, and then be set up to grow your business. But we got to start somewhere. Okay, so step one, we start with a clarity and a picture of what your business looks like right now. How do we do that? That's a really good question. We ask questions. Imagine that, right? We start with our bad diagnostic, the business architecture diagnostic. And what that does is we ask you 50 questions. It takes you 10 minutes to fill out or less. And we're going to have a very, very accurate picture of what your business looks like across the 10 fundamental business disciplines that spell out the word harmonious above my head, hence the name of the show. So these are the fundamental business disciplines that are present in all companies, whether it's you're the biggest company in the world or you make $1 a year. These elements are present when you have a business structure. Anytime you are exchanging value for money, That is what fits in the harmonious business architecture. Now, so how do we do this? We ask you five questions per discipline. And by doing that, we understand how well linked your company is internally. So we can say, okay, is your marketing based off of your 
your mission, your vision? Is it in line with who your ideal client is? Is your, are you protected? Do you have a risk and defense strategy? Do you have a good HR system? We don't use these words, we've modified them, but in traditional terms, this is exactly what it is. So we get this picture, we analyze it, and then we sit down and we pick a target. We're gonna pick a target for 90 days out, that's all we're working on, and we're gonna wanna know where are you going in 90 days? Now, the best way to actually pick that target is to go one step further and set the bigger vision. So we're gonna start with your company's navigation, which is typically called strategic planning. We renamed it navigation. You've heard me talk about that if you listen to the show before, but in its essence is really, it's how you get from point A to point B. It's where your company is going. If you don't have a compass or a map in business, you won't go anywhere. The Bible says without a vision, the people will, will perish. And it is the same for your company. It, it doesn't matter if it's your company or not, or if it's just your employees, even you as the owner, founder, CEO, if you lack a very clear vision that is definable by metrics on paper, you will stumble and not achieve all that you could in the next five years. So we do start with a five-year vision. We start with the core values of your company. And then we also start with a mission. And we use these three pieces to really set up building that foundation that we can grow and build on top of to grow your company over the next 90 days and well beyond. So we start there, we align those three pieces, and then we really understand where you're going, who you're serving, and who your people need to be inside the walls and who you need to be and what qualities you need to demonstrate in order to serve those people and reach that vision. You can already see how things are starting to tie together. So from there, then what we're gonna do is pick the 90 day objective. So I told you we were gonna do that, that's step one. We had to go kind of back a step. So step 0.5, if you will, was your navigation. Step one now is picking your 90 day outcome. So we pick three projects that are gonna get us closer to that five year vision. We break that down into smaller manageable chunks. And then, and we have a process to do that with our clients, depending on what their vision is. And we set three projects. In these projects, it will be things that are essential, will move the company forward, will force the company to grow and change, and we eliminate everything else. That's where the magic starts to happen. So in the clarity phase, when we're analyzing where your business is, where you want it to be, and even in the navigation and analyzing your vision, we need to take a look at your calendar. What we're gonna do is a one week time study. You don't have to go super crazy with this. I like to use my Google calendar as a matter of fact, and just after I do something, after, so this recording, for example, after I complete this recording and all other activities that are associated with it, whatever that may be, I would go on my Google calendar and I would put in a time block of, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, however long it takes me and put in recorded podcast and assign it to one of my projects. So ideally we want to be doing activities that are in line with these three projects. If we're not, we're just gonna put it in a category of other for right now. So we're gonna identify what we're doing, how long we're doing it for, and your calendar at the end of one week should be totally full. Not before you get into the week, but after you analyze what you've done over the course of that past week. So your calendar should be full, you should know exactly where everything lies, if it's in one of your three projects in line with those objectives, or if it's other, and we're gonna analyze it. We're gonna look at, we like to color code them. So if it's in line with a project, we're gonna make it one color, let's say green. If it's outside of that, we're gonna classify it in two categories. Yellow means we could probably give it to somebody else and not have to do it ourselves. Red would mean we're not gonna do it at all. It is not serving the company. It's not in line with the projects. Nobody needs to do it. It's a complete waste of time. Quite frankly, when we do this time study with almost all of our clients, there's a whole lot of red, not a lot of green, and a pretty good amount of yellow. You can see how that's backwards and how flipping that script would propel your company forward. Now, here's why we don't start with just a plan to grow your company. We have to get this under control first, and that's because we don't even know where our time's going. We don't know how we're showing up and why we're missing targets and not hitting our goals and objectives. And maybe you are, but you're also overworked, maxed out, stressed, and the thought of growing might even scare you a little bit. I've had that conversation several times this week too, is, well, I want to grow, but I'm kind of scared of what that would look like. 
You don't have to be scared when you tackle it this way because we're doing calendar and stress first, then company growth without you as the owner. So that's essentially step one. Identify where the time waste is going, figure out what we can get rid of, or at least plan to reduce. And that's what we're going to do is make that plan in step in the second step, which is when we visit serenity, the S in harmonious, traditionally called time management. There's no such thing. You cannot manage time. You can just manage how you show up in time and how you spend your time. So this is where the oxymoron of small business ownership and entrepreneurship comes in because we all start our businesses for freedom. We want the freedom to do whatever we want, whenever we want it. We don't want to have a boss. We think life is a big party. And then we start our business. And where's the freedom? I don't know. We are chained to our business. And in most cases, we are the core of our business. And without us, it's very hard to step away for a day, let alone a week vacation or two. As a matter of fact, I had conversations this week where I usually ask people, if you were to step away from your business for three weeks, no contact, no emails, no text messages, absolutely cut off, what would happen? And the immediate look of panic that came over their face told me everything I needed to know. But it's also the most common story. I have actually not met anyone in talking to them who, when seeking advice on how to grow their business, could step away for three weeks. If you can't step away for three weeks and have zero contact with your business and not be worried, don't grow your business. That's all I'm going to say about that. Your business can't handle the stress because you can't. We need to make sure you can handle the stress, then we can grow your business. And that starts by removing you, getting back your time, and refocusing the business. Okay, Serenity. What do we do in Serenity? So we have our projects. We have our the outcomes for the first 90-day sprint. What do we do to make sure our calendar doesn't get messed up like it is now? Well, we want it to be filled in as much as possible. And this is where it's we're very flexible on this. I'm not going to tell you you have to wake up at 5 a.m. and do this certain morning routine and whatever it is. A lot of the gurus out there will tell you you have to have a specific morning routine and do your big projects first. Listen, we're going to work within your mental capacity and how you like to show up best. Some people like to work first thing in the morning. I'll tell you what, if I don't go to the gym in the morning, I am not very productive for the rest of the day. It's just a mental thing. I need to get my head right in order to tackle the rest of my day. So for me, we're not doing any work before we go to the gym. Then when I get back, I have breakfast and family time. Then we can dive into work. You might tell me, nope, I got to wake up at 4 a.m., do work for four hours before the kids are even up, and then I can have family time, take a quick break, and go back to do more less meaningful work, we'll say, after that. Okay, totally fine. Or you may say the other way around. I have to do all the meaningless crap that's weighing on me first thing in the morning when I get in, but I know like my optimal time is from noon to 3 p.m. to work. That's when I get my best work done. Okay, fantastic. That is totally fine. We will work with your preferred schedule and just make sure we pack those hours where you know you perform best with your most important activities. And the one thing I'll say is we schedule your important activities, but we also block off time to make sure you're in the right mental state to do them. So whenever you perform best, we're going to put those activities on the calendar. So they are activities you must complete. You will get done ideally before you do anything else in the day, unless the example I gave before is you have to kind of do some meaningful, meaningless stuff to get in the groove, also fine. But we're going to make sure this time block is going to make sure your 90-day sprint, your objectives, will be completed. We move them from possible to inevitable, and that's how we're able to achieve growth, growth that is sustainable and inevitable long-term. You can actually have sustained exponential growth. People don't, they look at me a little funny when I say that because they're like exponential sustained growth. All the biggest companies in the world pretty much did that to get there over a very long period of time. They had exponential growth. If you want that, it's possible, but you have to understand the structure to get there. So I'm not saying that's what you want. Maybe you just want steady growth. Maybe you want to grow by 25, 30% over the next five years. Okay. We have to start here. You don't get there to that big of a company without first starting with this foundation. So we're scheduling your projects, we're scheduling your key activities, and ideally this trickles down to your leadership team and all of your employees, however big your company is. You identify per role and per person, what are their most important activities, when are they getting done, and are they on everybody's calendar? 
If you can do that, you can totally transform the way your workforce shows up. And really what you can do, and this is where you're going to shake your head at me, eliminate 80% of the work that your company does. I can prove it. We leverage the 80-20 rule with our clients. We do it over and over and over. And 80% of what you do is meaningless. Because if you look at the 80-20 rule, for 20% of what you do is getting 80% of the results. So if we focus all our attention there, we all get our time back. We all get our energy back. And we're more productive on that 20%, which gets you the 80% lift. So you really don't even take a step back in terms of your revenue or profit. Actually, you will make more profit work less, have more energy, and be more effective and productive in those times. It is this combination of results and inputs that does not make any sense, but it proves itself right over and over and over. So that's really it. We start with clarity. Then we move to your navigation. We select your projects, your outcomes, and then we schedule it on your calendar. So what we want to do, the goal within that 90 days is to get you wherever your meaningless or non-essential activities are on day one of the 90 days, we want to reduce them by 50% by the end of 90 days. So let's just say, for example, you have in a 40 hour work week, 20 hours for you are spent on non-essential activities. We would want by the end of the 90 day sprint, 10 hours a week to be spent on that or less, ideally less. But if we can eliminate 50%, you'll be shocked by how far you could grow on the back end of that. So follow that system. So that's it. You follow that process. You put it into place. See what happens in your company. Do that for 90 days. Follow that simple plan. Then bring that down through the rest of your company. Start bringing your leadership team. Start bringing in your managers and other all of your employees. If you can spread this to your whole organization, you will be shocked. Your profit will go through the roof. Your company and team morale will go through the roof. And your, your effort and your time worked will be fun. You'll have, you'll have that freedom that you started your business to achieve in the first place. It will finally happen. If you can start going from a week away from your business to three weeks, to a month, to a month and a half, stress test it. See how long you can walk away. And the idea is to keep ramping that up while continuing to reduce your essential activities. What we really wanna do is make sure you as the founder, owner, CEO, whatever your role is, are really non-essential. That's when your freedom is truly had. When you can do whatever you want and working is a choice, not a need, that's where freedom lies. Freedom is not really having more money to do things because if you're chained to your business, it doesn't matter how much money you have because you don't have time. You need time. You need money and multiplying those two things together is how much freedom you have. So try it out. If you want to go faster, my offer to you is to reach out and take that assessment. Do the first step, figure out where your clarity is or get clarity on your business, excuse me. And what we will do from there is give you that path. We'll help you identify those three projects, reduce the time on your calendar and ultimately get through that 90 day sprint as quick as possible. We see our clients really making very big strides in the first 30 days and 60 days. And the, the calm that starts to set over them is really what we're after. We take the stress of running your business. We eliminate it. We make it now fun. We give you the clarity into your business so you know how it operates and how it should operate. And then we give you the confidence to run your business because we give you these projects and with your help, of course, help you select them so you can achieve that five-year vision. And then if you want to come join us, you get the community aspect too. We have our inner circle, other members, our clients are all doing this together. We bounce ideas off each other. And I would invite you to take that step and step and join a community where you can build a harmonious business, have fun running your business and eliminate your stress of day-to-day -day business ownership with this community. So take the first step. I'll put it on the screen. It's in the show notes as well. Take the bad whatif.com and see where you get when you have clarity to know where you are versus where you want to be and what happens when you have an actual concrete plan to get there. It's not just a plan that may or may not work. These are plans that work 100% of the time for our clients and we want to give that to you too. So take the bad whatif.com We'll see you on the flip side of that, and we'll give you the clarity, confidence, and community that you've always wanted to run your business 
with fun, joy, and 